Okay, uh, I think be before I start, uh, I would like to introduce myself. I, I would like to ask a little bit about about the uh, participant who are joining this uh, talk. So my name is uh, Yasser Bashir and I'm assistant professor at School of Physics and Geophysics section at University Science Malaysia in Pinang. So here is my email if you have some questions or queries or even some suggestions uh, you can share with me and also you can uh, WhatsApp me or call me directly on this number. I would like to thank Beria University and also Dr. Marcel uh, for inviting me for this talk. So, so today's topics will be uh, advances in geophysical research and its future. And it is in recognition with uh, com contemporary trends in geoscience. So actually the agenda of this presentation or the talk will be, uh, I will discuss about some challenges in geophysical research. Then we will move on to objective of some research because the research which I'm going to present here, uh, obviously we have to define some objective bit prior to do some research. Then I will also discuss about some seismic imaging methods which we have developed in during my PhD research as well as some projects with Petronas and also with USM. And currently we are working on machine learning. So I'm going, I'm going to share some experiences or some research on machine learning as well. Then moving to the, uh, obviously machine learning will come up with the image. So, so for hydrocarbon prediction or reservoir modeling or geological interpretation, we, we must need the seismic inversion to have the access of lithology because in seismic data you always look at the traces it's not the actually lithology you are getting it so seismic inversion is one of the method i think it's well known and you can you can look at the lithology of the subsurface then obviously um, in after inversion obviously we have to do some interpretation like geological structural interpretation or either stratigraphy or uh, geological interpret interpretation, then I will conclude my talk with some conclusion regard regards. So uh, as regard the introduction of this talk, so actually if you know majority of the remaining proven oil and gas reserves is contained by carbonate reservoir. So if you look at the um, look at the map of the world and regarding to the acquisition and everything. So most of the hydrocarbon reservoirs, 60% of the reservoir is in carbonate. So and carbonate is quite complex and complicated to explore. And also seismic imaging methods are not working well on, on that type of buildups. I'm going to show some of the images, how does it appear and what, what we are going to do and what are the possibilities. So in, in this uh, regard, like uh, carbonate data, we, we are working on seismic imaging, specifically on diffractions, and which has contributed contributed and to an enhance in quality of seismic. Uh, but still, we have some lacking with the lithology. So for lacking the lithology, we are using seismic inversion. And also, what we did, uh, we we did actually the combination of imaging and also the uh, inversion method to delineate the subsurface structure and lithology. Obviously from seismic we can only look at the structure like you can look at the anticline, syncline, fault, fractures and everything but for lithology what is the lithology of that formation is so that one you can get it from the seismic inversion. So that inversion uh, also we have applied for, for electrophasis analysis which normally we do for reservoir studies. So uh, uh, before uh, I start my presentation, I would like to give an uh, overview of this um, area. So if actually I'm working in mostly in Malaysia. So if you look at this map over here, so this is a part of Malaysia, which is Sarawak is one of the state. So this image or this line is taken from this place. So it's a regional line. So from A dash to A. So A dash to A is this one, A to A dash. So if you look at the subsurface lithology, so you can look at this blue color, which is uh, carbonate, and you can see very steeply dipping, steeply dipping uh, carbonate buildups. 
So obviously you can have the interpretation of this reflector, like the first one, second, this. Actually, these are the formation names, so it's okay. So we can just look at this first reflector, second, and so on. It's easy to interpret. But once it comes to the carbonate buildups, like if we have this steeply dipping carbonates, so the seismic imaging methods or even the interpretation is quite difficult because you cannot image up to 90 degrees because it's almost 90 degrees. Over here, you can see 80 degree or 70 degree. And here is like complexity. And if you go into the subsurface, there is a fault, fractures, a lot of complexity in this in this region we have. So what we did, uh, uh, we found some geophysical challenges and also some issues in imaging of the subsurface. So just to summarize these three challenges, like one of the challenges, shallow gas anomalies. So from this type of shallow gas anomaly, what we got, we got the amplitude and frequency losses because your amplitude will decay and also frequency will be lost because of the absorption. And the second problem facing because of the gas anomalies, we have the false structure because because of the gas, you have the low velocity. So if you have the low velocity, then your structure looks like, I mean, if you look at the time, so it will be appearing at the shallow time. So it means the false structure position we will be having. And also poor event continuity. So these are three because of this one. But once we move to the fault, fracture, castification, and salt ages, so because of that um, issues, we have the fault structure, like the fault is not properly imaged, then poor event continuity also, this is one of the factors. And the third challenge which we found in Malaysian Basin, even in Pakistan, if you're working somewhere, anisotropy is very important. So in, in, in when you have the anisotropy, because anisotropy is something that you have the wave propagation in different direction and different velocity. Let's say if you're going vertically, the velocity is different. If you're going like 60, 70 degree angle, then it's a different velocity. So that is the cause of anisotropy. So because of that, obviously we also have the wrong event and fault positioning. I mean, the position of the fault, proper, maybe it is a little bit higher, but you will appear it's still lower. And even focusing and well mistyped. When you're going to do well to seismic type, then it's caused the problem. So obviously when we have the challenges, these are some opportunities to, to, to come up with your own ideas. So based on these three main problems, we come up with this solution. So for shallow gas, if you have the amplitude decay or the frequency losses, then you, what you can do, you can do the Q compensation. Also, you can do Q tomography, Q mean Q compensation or the attenuation factor. Then we have another method which is called diving wave tomography, which actually gives you the better structure position or the uh, true structure of the subsurface. Then also we have the high resolution reflector tomography reflection tomography but just to summarize this slide so actually we was focusing on the fault fracture and salt and castrification especially so we come up with the diffraction imaging so actually these are all the problems and these are all the solutions so based on this solution we come up we want to choose which method is better for us so that's why we choose diffraction imaging on only on the focus of this research so over here, you can see this is an image of the subsurface from the carbonate. So you can see the top of the carbonate. It's actually gently, gentle dipping. It's not very steeply dipping. But below this uh, carbonate, we, we can't find any fault or fracture. So our objective, based on this one, we define some objective. Because uh, I understand that you both are doing some of the research. So you properly have to define the problems based on the problem you must have to you have to come up with your motivation or some objective then you have to come with, with the research objective so the first research objective was to have the better wave modeling i mean when you send the waves to the subsurface so you must have 
better source like dynamite, Viprocise, which source is better for the specific target. So that one you have to define. Then the second objective was to come up with the machine learning technique to preserve the refracted event for the diffraction in migration. So if you look at these two images, which is one of on the left side is a conventional image. So in conventional image, you can look at all the events are properly imaged. I mean, you can see this continuity of this reflector. This is actually carbonate. So you see the top base carbonate is good. But once you look at the time slice over here, because if you understand the castification, castifications are some pinch how pinch holes or like that one but when we do the diffraction imaging on this one so you can see the small scale event even if inside this white color or the black color you have the detail event let me take a time slice of this one so when we take the time slice so you can see on the left side is a conventional on the right side is the diffraction image so if you look at this white color or the reflectivity you cannot see inside the events, the small events like karstification. You, you know why we are doing karstification? Because karstification, uh, when we drill the well in in reservoir, if we have the cast over there, so we have the, uh, I mean the the water input from that karstification. So that's why we have to image that cast and to avoid drilling at that point, or we have to do the better cementing process. So over inside this one, you can see a small scale, this events and even the cast over here, you see this is only the black one, but here you can see the black and white. So it's, it's mean it shows the better, I mean, the continuity of the castification. So that was our research objective. So uh, I think uh, if you look at the diffraction theory, so diffraction theory is actually taken from the from the light, light wave or light or wave propagation. So if you have the light source over here, which is this red color, and it is passing through a slit. I think we have done this experiment in our matriculation or maybe in intermediate. So when we pass this light, the light source is this one. And if it is passed from the slit, so supposedly what we should have, we should have the direct light from here. And this should be the dark portion. But what happened in real? So we have this red color is continuing. We have the direct light here and the dark portion over here. But in between dark and light portion, we have the diffracted light. You have seen in daily life. I mean, when your sun is set already, but you cannot see the sun, but still you see the light. So that is actually, I mean, before the time of Maghreb or something like that. Even in the morning when sun is not rise, so you have the diffracted light. So that diffracted light is actually producing from this edges. You know, this edges of this slit. So that diffracted light is like here is shown in blue. So the same principle apply to the seismic. So when we have in subsurface, let's say we have this reflector, which is shown in black color over here if you follow my cursor and on the top we have the source and receiver so it's a zero offset uh, data set so we have the source and receiver on the top so when we acquire the data so we have the reflection on this reflector but when there is a discontinuous or discontinuity of this uh, reflector over there we have the diffraction hyperbola why does it produce? Because of the edges of this reflector. So the similar things applies to the fault, fractures, pinch outs, some acoustic impedance contrast or anything which we look into the subsurface. We have this phenomena. So what are the properties of this uh, diffraction? So in diffraction hyperbola, so we have the property from positive amplitude or positive phase on the right side, which is on the off reflector. And on reflector, we have the negative amplitude. So like this one. So if we, when we do the migration, like Kirchhoff integral migration, 
So at, actually in integral solution, what we are doing, we are summing all the amplitude, all the energy from the hyperbola to the apex. So similar thing, let's say if we bring this energy to here or bring this energy to here. So finally, we will have the one tray. So this figures actually explain more power here. So on the top, we can see if we have the reflector. So we have this reflection, like all the traces is shown here in red color. But if we decompose this reflector into a point refractor, so the point refractor will be like this one. So let's say if I, I, I want to divide this reflector into point refractors, we break into four, which is shown here. So you can see at each point defector, we have the diffraction hyperbola. So we have the positive and negative, positive, negative amplitude, so like that one. It's too much technical about the diffractions, but uh, just to give you an idea, maybe you are interested in this thing or you can use or utilize this type of thing. So if we decompose diffraction, it will be appears like this. If we decompose reflection, so you can go from below to top. So as I mentioned, the objective, so this was the introduction of the diffraction. So now we will focus on the objective part. Objective one was of this research project was to have the advanced wave propagation. Advanced wave propagation means like we are using finite difference or some other method if we are well known about that one. So still we, we found some of the dispersions like uh, noises or some ground roll, some these type of things are very common. But when we make an advanced wave modeling, so let's say if we have the point source in the middle, in, in, in the middle and we send the waves through here, so you can see how beautifully it is going through and reflecting back to the boundaries. So there is no, no, I mean, there is no dispersion in this data set. So let me capture this image. Let's say if we take the image of this section, it is in black and white. So on the right, on the left side, we have the finite difference modeling. So over here, you can see some of the artifacts such as these dispersions. So when we do the seismic processing or imaging, then probably this, this dispersion will make the disconfident or it will not help you to do the interpretation, proper interpretation. So that's why we, on the right side is a low rank approximation. So what we did, we used low rank method to produce the wave modeling. So using that one, so you can see how beautifully the wave is propagating into the subsurface. Just to keep in mind, it's a constant velocity model. That's why we don't have any reflection. So we are just checking on it, that how, be, how accurate is our wave modeling. So in this uh, sense, you can see this uh, modeling is better than this. So the first objective was to have the better wave propagation into the subsurface to get the better image, better data set, rather than we have the dispersion. If you're not clear with this, so over here I have uh, plotted the amplitude spectrum with two reflectivity model. So on the left side is a finite difference model. So you can see the signal is this one, and this one is dispersions and noises. On the right side is low rank modeling. So if we look at this reflection, this is one of the signal, and this is the second signal, or you can call it the reflection or something like that. So from this uh, figures or from this method, the objective one was achieved by mathematically and everything was done in this research. So the second objective of the research project was to build a machine learning model, machine learning algorithms to preserve the diffraction. So now we have the subsurface model and we have the wave modeling technique. So we send the waves, we already got the data set now the objective is to separate these diffractions for better imaging of the fall, fracture, castification, this type of thing. So for that one, obviously we, we have some other methods, but 
where those have some lacking like they cannot preserve the accurate diffractions of this type of thing so we, we we are doing work we are doing work on this machine learning and we give give uh, our algorithms some images or the pattern which is called the supervised learning so from that it can predict the diffractions i am going to show some results of this one so just to understand this machine learning flow so what are three main criteria of machine learning first one is input the second is training third one is prediction so on the left side we have the seismic section it is obviously unmigrated seismic section so in middle we have the training model or the trained model so which is based on three different techniques so one of them is supervised learning in supervised learning normally you have to give the task to the your trained model and the second one is unsupervised learning so what it does it actually takes the data or the the things from this section and train your model in this you have to train everything from yourself this one is data driven i mean it will take the information from data and third one is reinforcement so it is actually learned from data and also from this one but it will learn from the error let's say if it has taken one of the diffraction pattern wrongly so i will assign that this is not the perfect diffraction so it will learn from this one so these are three main machine learning procedure i think most of you must be well known about this one so once we have trained the model so finally we have got the prediction stage so in prediction stage we are going to have the diffracted event or the diffraction event in the data set how does it work actually uh, this is one of the example so actually in seismic data it contain millions of diffraction because in subsurface we have hundreds or maybe thousands of fault fractures discontinuity pinch outs or like uh, we have some unconformities disconformity paraconformities angular so these all things actually consider as uh, discontinuities so if we have this discontinuity in the subsurface we must have the diffractions over there obviously the reflectors are easy to image i mean if you have like plastic sediment like we have in indus basin or these stuff in pakistan these are quite uh, easy to image but once it moves to the like fracture fault or uh, pinch out or these these are very common problems so these are actually one of the big challenge so when we acquire the seismic data actually we contain uh, hundreds of refracted events so that's why what we have to do we have to classify the diffraction pattern in a good candidate so obviously you cannot take a image and uh, you cannot take a image and highlight each diffraction because there is millions if you have a big data set there is millions of diffractions so that's why you have to come up with a machine learning algorithm so what we do in this so let's say this is our seismic section and we take the part of diffracted or the even over here and we give the feature map extraction so this is actually all this layers are called convolutional layers in which we define the feature extraction a feature extraction mean what we have given in our train model like thousands or maybe lakhs of uh, diffracted events so we have given so it can read it will match with this part of the data so if it is match with that it will define the predicted event so let's say here we have given spherical diffraction rounded or newton rings so this these are type of diffracted events we have given so once it is match with this one so it will nominate okay this in this part we have this type of diffraction or this type of data so that is called the classification so in machine learning actually we have three main thing one is your input the second is your training model either you go for classification or feature extraction 
So based on these uh, things, we have come up with the workflow. So in that workflow, we are using two machine learning approach. One is image segmentation, and the second one is multi-domain diffraction identification. So in image diffraction, image segmentation, what we do actually we have the very big image. Let's say you have like six kilometer or eight kilometer subsurface data. So it is hard for algorithm to read. So what we do, we do the image segmentation. Let's say on the top, bottom, middle, and bottom. So we divide different components. So we divide the component one, two, three, and so on. How many components you have in this image? Then we run this machine learning approach for diffraction matching with supervised network. You already have the trained network. So based on your trained network, you can match with this events what you are looking for and also on the right side we have another algorithm which is called multi-domain diffraction identification so in that we define different domains so in that we have on the right side image segmentation we have components on the right side we have the domain let's say you have the near offset far offset mid offset or you have zero offset data so these different domains you can define and you can come up with this supervised learning network. So after you have already, because some of the events will be left with this one, some of the events will be left with this one. So these two will be working uh, simultaneously. So so it will give the better, better results. I mean, if some of the event it cannot detect, it can detect which it cannot detect, then it, on the left side, ML1 will detect. So then we will combine the segmentation and domains, and we will look at the true diffraction, either it's detected or no. If yes, then we go for migration. If no, then this loop will be continued and over here and here. So this is uh, one of the uh, example. I mean, uh, we have used I did this. I did perform this uh, research on initial stage. So on the left side, we have the input model, which is a very simple model, three layer, but but we have the very steeply dipping fault here. So it's a constant velocity model with different density values. So once we acquire the data here, so you can see this diffractions, diffraction hyperbolas over here. So the in conventional layer, we have already the train network. So based on that one, we got the only diffraction pattern. So from this all four point diffractors, when they stop this one, this one, and this one, so you can have one, two, three, four. And obviously this one is a very small discontinuity. If we focus over here, so over here, there will be a very small discontinuity, such as like, um, small anticline or something like so you, you can still see this diffraction pattern so it's mean the machine learning can detect all these type of diffracted even it's not about the diffraction or something but it's just about the technique how you can utilize this technique probably you are not working on diffraction but you can use these techniques in your own research and the second model is a variable dense, variable velocity model with cons constant density. So over here, when the velocity is changing, obviously becoming more complex and complex. So you can see this is also the same model like this one. This is the first model. This is second model. But you can see the diffraction events are mixed up. Like here and this one, velocity is changed. So over here, you can see this diffracted event. You can see on the left side, hyperbola, but right side is mixed with this one. So, but machine learning can exactly detect this diffracted events. So like this one, you can see this one is detected. This continuity is also detected. So just to explain how machine learning is effective and can be utilized, utilized in your future research. Also, we do some studies on near and far stack, just like the seismic inversion. So before migration, 
we do some analysis on near stack and far stack just to understand the diffraction. So these are the final image section which have the diffracted event. So this is separated diffracted event from the machine learning. Then uh, finally we image this data set plus reflection with diffraction. So you can see how beautifully it is resolved. So you can see a very big fault, a major fault in this one. We have a small faults, which is uh, highlighted with this dotted line. And obviously we have not interpreted the reflectors because we are not focusing on structure interpretation in this project. So just was the focus of continuity. So if you look at here, I mean the continuity of the subset below the carbonate is also properly imaged. So this is a zoom in. So you can look at the continuity and small forward fractures are properly imaged. So as I mentioned that uh, that was about the imaging of the subsurface. So now we move into the seismic inversion. So now we already know the subsurface layers. I mean, we have already imaged layers, for fracture, cars, and everything. But now we have to understand what are these layers. So for that work, we have. So we have started from acquisition system, like I, I mentioned about the modeling. Then we have the earth model like VP, VS, porosity structure. Then we got the seismic response. So now what we have to do, we have to come up with the deconvolution, which is called the seismic inversion. And we recovered the geology. So geology, understanding the geology is something like you have to understand the subsurface lithology. Because when you go into the field, into the, into the field, you can see every outcrop you can you can nominate which formation is that and which lithology and what type of things are there so through seismic inversion you can you can you can convert your seismic data subsurface seismic data into lithology so which will give you the structure velocity rock property fluid and lithology so what is seismic inversion so just to understand a basic understanding of inversion so on the top, you have the reflectivity. Let's say your seismic looks like this one. Already you have known, known this one. But once we convert this seismic data into lithology using seismic inversion, and actually now it is telling you the lithology. So I don't have this uh, legend here, but based on that velocity and density or acoustic impedance, you can know what is the lithology of the subsurface. So before we, we go into the specific area, we will look at the regional section. So this is actually the regional section of the line which I have shown you in the start. So you can see how complex these buildups of the carbonates are. So our study area was this one. So now I will focus on only these two buildups. One of them is this one, the second one is this one. So just to focus on that one, so we, we already drilled the well here. I mean, two wells we have, and it's already producing the gas. And you, you can see this is your one reservoir, reservoir two. So prior to, uh, before doing the seismic inversion, we go through well to seismic type. The first objective, well to seismic type. So in that, normally if your seismic is either in time or depth, Still, your seismic should be matched with the well. So the blue color shows the well, uh, well trace or the DT, and this one is your seismic. So you have to match your seismic with well to bring your well and seismic to the correct position. These are the seismic wavelet. You can use either minimum phase wavelet or zero phase wavelet or the wavelet from the well launch. So now we, I come up with the initial model. So initial model is important, which shows the 
which shows the your seismic to well tie and seismic inversion methods are okay because for for band pass filter we apply from 10 to 15 hertz low cut filter so i it's mean we have only the frequencies from 10 to 15 hertz in this data because your seismic is 10 to 15 or sometimes 20 to 30 hertz not more than that and obviously your well log is very high resolution so we have to match this well this it, in between this white lines we have the well log so when you match with the well logs with your seismic so you can see this blue is matching with this one this one okay and up to top is also okay so it's mean our initial model is correct then we move to the uh, final seismic inversion so over here you can see in this in between this white lines it actually this is your well well log properties and on the back side is your seismic so over here you can see on the top this purple is matched with this one so this is a very high acoustic impedance contrast and further if you see this blue color is matched then this blue is matched so it means your seismic is now converted and very well matched with this well log so now you can you can you can continue interpretation of this reservoir normally it is used for field development because when you drill a well in one reservoir it's not good enough so you have to drill many wells in this area so for that you must need to understand the structure and lithology of the subsurface over here you can see this red color which is actually a tight layer in between reservoir 1 and reservoir 2 so this tight layer is a very thin layer and it's impermeable so that would also we did from electrophysics analysis so over here we found well one and well two and we found this tight layer which is 3a over here so on the top we have upper reservoir and the bottom we have the lower reservoir even it is actually in one build up still we have two reservoir on the top and bottom so obviously we have some other methods such as and seismic attributes and so that helps us to do the interpretation so now uh, i started with processing imaging inversion and now moving to the interpretation so from interpretation you once you have that all of these analysis then you come up with interpretation like you pick the horizons on each line then you come up with the 3d surface maps from different attributes you can to find out your gas water contact where is your wells drills you can plot it there and also some of the attributes such as phase volume amplitude volume these give you some insights informations of the subsurface data and also on the third figure which is over here is the spectral decomposition so in the spectral decomposition what we do it actually helps us to identify the channels so this is one of the example from gulf of mexico so you can see how beautifully this channels are resolved so on the same carbonate buildups as i mentioned we have the top and base carbonate so this blue line is actually interpreted as a top of the carbonate and this purple is actually on the base carbonate so once we plot into the 3d section so because interpretation normally done in 2d but once you sort create the surface map so you have the top carbonates over here so this is build up 1 and build up 2 over here then similarly you can plot the base of the carbonate so you can see the well is up to base of the carbonate so because as we have the tight layer in between so we have top and base carbonates okay so that's uh, bring this bit to the conclusion of this uh, talk so the present research is useful to reduce the uncertainty of the key subsurface parameter that has strong bearing for field performance i mean obviously we we started from the processing imaging inversion interpretation i the interpretation can comes before and also after and it gives the better performance of the field development and also we have uh, discussed about the low rank 
decomposition for wave propagation. Obviously, when we do the modeling, so we need a better wave propagation to have the clean and better image of the subsurface, which is actually without dispersion artifacts. And also the application of supervised machine learning methods in two method in two ways like image classification and uh, pattern recognition so these are applied to the data for better accuracy and also the machine learning actually work well to detect the diffraction in complex velocity environment whether the other method fails because there is some plane wave destruction method i have some published paper on that one but machine learning is providing better preservation of these type of events. Obviously, when we preserve better, we image it better. If we image is better, we interpret this interpretation is good. And the future research is in progress to apply the development method in carbonate fields. I mean, different carbonate field, either plastic or carbonate, any field we can apply. So with that's all, thank you so much. Uh, Obviously, I, I would like to thank my university, University Science Malaysia, for providing research. And I belong to the School of Physics, Geophysics section. Obviously, they are providing me research facility. And also, I would like to thank my previous organization, which is University Technology Pantronas. I work on that in that as a research scientist for five years. And also, I've used some software from CGG, like Hamster and Russell. And finally, the um, thanks goes to Patronas for providing the proprietary data from the Malaysian basin and also allow me to present uh, openly with this research. And finally, I would like to thank Maria Industry for invitation as a guest spe speaker and also uh, give me a chance to present my research and also we hope we will have the future collaboration together. Okay, thank you so much. If you have any questions, uh, I'm happy to answer that.